morning uh, all of you good morning to all my respected uh, seniors dr ak e. das and dr ganpati greetings from my side from ahmedabad i am an interventional cardiologist at the outset i would like to thank uh, corona remedies especially mr charlu uh, mr vijay charlu is a very close friend for uh, inviting me to speak on this particular topic and as we are all knowing that my topic is that uh, uh, where are we yet and why why can't we start or initiate uh, sgl2 inhibitor or either or glp1 receptor antagonist in a indoor patients of cardiovascular setting mm -hmm. so i just wanted to tell you that why this topic has been thought of because in ada 2021 it has been uh, shown that these are the molecule which has come up with uh, the series of trials which are having an improving cardiovascular outcome and that is probably the reason why we wanted to involve this particular molecule in our day to day clinical practice now with that we are now shifting our area of interest from just a sugar control in a diabetic individual where you, we are aware that before two decades the main area of concern was to control fbs and pbbs then one decade earlier it was mainly concentrating on hba1c but in last 5 to 6 years now the complete scenario has been changed and it has converted into a patient centric approach and why is it so because diabetes is not considered as a single entity it is a complex syndrome where you have to take care of comorbidity and the other cardiovascular risk factors and how can we achieve that that is possible because we all know that diabetes is one of the major major cause of complications in form of cardiovascular disease cerebrovascular disease heart failure and kidney disease and the main area of cause of death is also because of that uh if you look at the past history of all the molecules of diabetes which has been started from metformin which is having a little weak evidence as far as the cv outcome is concerned but there are no significant kidney uh, hard point data available likewise if you are taking dpp4 inhibitor i think the neutral data as far as cv outcome is concerned except linagliptin the renal data are missing acarbos neutral data as far as cv and renal data is concerned coming to glp1 receptor agonist we have a very ample of data regarding reduction in the heart point cardiovascular outcome uh, or uh, beneficial data of cv outcome but there are no data as far as the heart failure or heart point renal points are concerned and that is where the role of sgld2 came into the picture where you have a positive data regarding cardiovascular data as well as heart point renal data now with that we can see that there is a paradigm shift from Uh, just a sugar control of uh, anti hyperglycemic drugs to the uh, the advancement in the field of diabetic drug which can be utilized to have a better cardiovascular and renovascular uh, therapeutic window now with that if you look at the new uh, the the new data which has come up in ada 2021 they have considered these two molecule of sgld2 inhibitor and glp1 receptor uh, agonist as a new citizen of the world why is it so because we all know that there are series of trials which has come up in last couple of years which has proven that it has produce a better benefits as far as the cardiovascular outcome data is concerned right from the beginning if you take empagliflozin canagliflozin or dapagliflozin as far as sglt2 inhibitor is concerned empiric outcome data beyond doubt established cs cvd cases more than 99% of the patients are being included and there is a 38% relative risk reduction in the cardiovascular death and all cause mortality so the trial which has come up with empagliflozin has completely changed the scenario what we are uh, you know treating as a diabetic uh, individual coming to canagliflozin in canvas and crescent i think you can you can definitely see that there is a ample of data available as far as the mace reduction is concerned and renal benefits parameters are concerned with canagliflozin but with a area of caution in a in a case of amputation or in a case of bone fracture with diclatimi 58 i think you can see that dapagliflozin has been involved not only in a established acvd Uh, which has been there in 40% of the cases but rest of the parameters like multiple risk factor they are been included and that is what we are seeing 
in our clinical day to day routine practice that majority of the patients they are cardiovascular disease risk factors along with diabetes and that is where i think dapagliflozin has produced one of the phenomenal data as far as the reduction in the hospitalization for heart failure is concerned so in nutshell if i want to put it all the uh, three sgrt2 inhibitor empagliflozin is mainly for all cause mortality and cv death reduction canagliflozin as far as the mace event that is cv death non fatal mi and non fatal stroke is concerned and renal parameter while in case of hhf or prevention and the treatment of heart failure i think dapagliflozin in declared tme58 has completely given a beneficial data unfortunately ortogliflozin in vortis cv even though the study design is almost matching the empareg outcome it has not produced a beneficial effects as that of empagliflozin now in last uh, couple of years like from 2019 you can see that dapa hf has come followed by dapa ckd where the role of dapagliflozin as a part of sgrt2 inhibitor has been used as a anti failure drug irrespective of the liver of the diabetes whether the patient is having diabetes or non diabetic whether the patient is having as cvd or non as cvd the beneficial data are there with almost 25% relative risk reduction as far as cv death and a hospitalization for heart failure is concerned primary and the secondary endpoint involving cv death and reduction in hhf, HHF both are being completely uh, in benefits of dapagliflozin on top of the standard care of therapy similarly for renal heart points dapa ckd is the only trial in which patients who are diabetic or non diabetic they are being involved and presence of microalbuminuria macroalbuminuria progression for the development of nephropathy all are being assessed whether the patient is having as cvd or non as cvd the data are favoring as far as the all cause mortality and cv death reduction is concerned in dapa ckd so these are the benefits of this particular trial in year 2020 we can see that empar uh, empar uh, reduce was being published and now emperor preserved is being published very recently which has been proven that empagliflozin is going to be a beneficial effect of a drug which can be utilized even in a patient with heart failure with preserved ejection fraction we just uh, we are just waiting for deliver uh, uh, the trial of dapagliflozin in preserved ejection fraction to get released so with this background we all know that sglt2 inhibitor is being completely uh you know uh, changing the overall scenario as far as the diabetic treatment is concerned but with a word of caution we all know that sglt2 inhibitor is a uh, it has got a glucose dependent mechanism it is mainly producing natriuresis glycosuria a reduction in the preload afterload and lv mass index all these things are going to be beneficial as well as the cardiac uh, effect or a beneficial effects are concerned but with word of caution because it has been associated with increased evidence of urinary tract infection genito urinary mycotic infection you glycemic decay or ketonemia ketonuria so you need to be very careful in educating all our patients that if they are receiving this drug they have to be under a very close monitoring and vigilant monitoring for first two weeks are required mainly for the fact that egfr should be uh, in a normal parameter ideally it should be more than uh, 30 and in that case if you are managing the patient well the benefit is definitely going to be there for that patient now with that we all know that the incidence of reduction in hba1c is almost in the range of 0.7 to 0.8 with sglt2 inhibitor with further more reduction in uh, weight which is in the range of uh, around 2 to 3 kg and reduction in the blood pressure which is again in the range of around uh, maybe 2 to 4 mm of mercury systole without a very important as far as the cardiologist is concerned or cardiology practice is concerned you should not have any ap uh, apparent episode of hypoglycemia and that has also not been seen with sglt2 inhibitor so with that background if we are comparing glp1 receptor agonist which is also having a glucose uh, dependent mechanism uh, by releasing insulin and by decreasing the release of glucagon i think you can see that the glp1 receptor has got a man, um, much more data as far as reduction in the mace events are concerned and that is the reason it has got a 1a indication especially liraglutide after uh, leader's trial 
has got a warning indication to be used in a patient with established stage CVD. But if I look at sustained six trial uh, with semaglutide or rewind trial with dil uh, dulaglutide, I think you can see that rewind has given a, a much more beneficial data, which is involving more than three times than the upper limit of uh, the data which has been there in sustained or uh, in leaders trial. And the data are basically divided into three categories. Mainly uh, those who are having diabetes, new onset diabetes with BMI of more or equal to 23. The main range of HbA1c which is in the range of around 7.3% but less than 9.5% uh, and uh, the, the population they were being divided into 50 years of age with established vascular disease in form of myocardial infarction or stroke. 55 year of age with subclinical vascular disease in form of ABI index of less than 0.9, presence of LVH, microalbuminuria, and third category, which is much more common category in our day to day clinical practice, and that is 60 year of age with maybe uh, two or more cardiovascular risk uh, factors or the criteria. They are mainly tobacco use or smoking. Uh, the presence of uh, dyslipidemia in form of elevated triglyceride low HDL, high LDL, high blood pressure with systolic and diastolic in the range of 140 by 95. All these things along with the waist hip ratio of more than one in male and 0.8 in female are being taken into the consideration. So with that, Rewind has produced a much, much better beneficial data as far as the reduction in the MACE events are concerned. Now with this background, I think we all are agreeing that these two drugs or the class of drugs have proven their efficacy as far as the OPD treatment or the OPD patients are concerned. Now this is the time to extrapolate our area of concern from OPD to indoor. And how can we achieve that? By giving a proper education to the patient and identify the number of patients where you can give a proper justification for both this molecule. And what are they? They are the indication of using this molecule in inpatient cardiovascular settings are diabetic individual with a new onset of heart failure and in a case of acute decompensated heart failure after a proper treatment and stabilization you can definitely initiate this therapy in presence of specialist i think you can definitely modify titrate the dose of the therapy moment. and you can uh, and you can definitely improvise the overall adherence to the therapy so with that i would like to summarize my talk and uh, give the importance of involving this therapy into in inpatient uh, Indian perspective with a mnemonic like A, B, C, D, E, S. That is A for HbA1c less than 7%, B for blood pressure less than 130 by 80, C for cholesterol with LDL of more than 50% reduction than the baseline, E for uh, exercise and uh, healthy eating habits, and S that is stress management, the the screening for complication and the another s is basically to have a better uh, quality of life and the d which i forgot to mention and is the amount of drugs which are being beneficial they are sglt2 inhibitor or glp1 receptor agonist uh, statin group of drugs pcsk9 inhibitors uh, arb or ace inhibitor or re in a case of heart failure and aspirin or ticagliror in a case of angina. So all these things uh, are to be taken into consideration by treating a diabetic individual. So diabetes is not a single entity. It is a drug uh, or it's a condition where you can utilize multiple drugs. So always keep a patient centric approach by treating comorbidity and other cardiovascular risk factor by selecting the proper uh, indicated patient and giving the benefit of this two molecule called SGLD2 inhibitor and GLP-1 receptor agonist. Thank you so much.